Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. In this episode, we're going to make gold coins. This is a nice simple approach to making low poly assets like this. I'll show you two approaches to optimize for games with a low poly count and one with a higher poly count. And this is all from a beginner's perspective. So I'm assuming that you understand the interface and basic tools like extrude and loop cut and so on. If you haven't already, it's a good idea to look at my Get Good at Blender series. And if you're completely new, then I suggest trying out my beginner's course before attempting this one. All the links are in the description. And it's a good idea to check out the playlist section in my channel for other great courses. If that's not quite enough, then I can thoroughly recommend the beginner's course from CG Boost. Again, links in the description. So I'm in the basic scene and my shortcut keys are displayed down the corner here. I'm going to delete the default cube and shift A to add mesh cylinder. Now it's a good idea to keep this fairly low poly. So we'll go to the cylinder dialog box down here and we'll change it to 20 in terms of the vertices going around. Now, if you're going really low poly in terms of the face count, then you might want to make this lower if it's an object that's not going to ever get close to the camera. So with this selected, I'm going to scale in the Z to bring it down. So S then Z, and I'll just zoom in quickly. And we'll keep it nice and chunky like this. Now, because I've scaled my object, if I press N on my keyboard and go up to item, you can see that it's got non-uniform scale and I want to actually set this, otherwise it may cause me problems later. So I'll press control A and apply my scale. And you can see it all sets back to one. I'll press N to get rid of that panel and into edit mode with tab. I'll press three to go to face mode or go to the menu up here. Select the top face by left click and I to inset. So that will create an inset like this. And I'll press E to extrude. So they will pull that in like this. Okay, so how do we make the skull? Well, I've drawn a handy image here as a reference, which we can drag in. But if I try and click and drag it now, it won't work. And that's because I'm in edit mode still with my coin. So I'll tab out of edit mode, get my skull coin reference and drag it in. Now in Blender, it's come in perpendicular to my camera. So I can press Alt R to remove any rotations and Alt G. So it goes back to the middle. So it removes any grabbing. I'll go to top view with seven on my numpad, or you can do that up here. And I'll go to wireframe. So I get an idea of where it's going to end up when I scale it. And with the empty selected, and that's my reference image. It's an empty, as you can see over there. If I scale that down, probably around there. Back to my object. Let's zoom in a bit and go to edit mode. Now what I'm going to do is simply cut out this shape. Now it's a mirror image, so I can do a mirror on this. The quick way to do that, if I press N on my keyboard and go to edit auto mirror. If you haven't got the auto mirror enabled, then go to edit preferences, add-ons, and type in auto, and you can see auto mirror is there, make sure it's ticked. The auto mirror is great because I can just select it under the edit menu and press auto mirror, and it cuts it in half. If I go to my modifier panel under my spanner there, or wrench if you're American, you can see that it's added an x-axis mirror and it's turned the clipping on for me. And you can see it's cut it in half as well. So I only now need to edit on one side. If I press K to get my knife tool, your icon should change to this with a tiny green square. And when I move over an edge, it snaps to it, as you can see there. And it's a good idea where you can to snap to an edge. I'll certainly want to do it in the middle here for my mirror. And you left click to apply that. And I'm trying to line up with these vertices here. So I'm going to go round and line up with those. It doesn't really matter too much about the topology. Whenever possible, you're trying to model in quads. But if it's on a flat surface, you don't need to worry too much. So I'll come into here and I'm not keeping in line with these now. When I've finished all my cuts, I just press enter. And now we've got cuts going all the way around there. If I go back to solid mode, we'll be able to see those. We've got our skull shape here. Now, if you're being really lazy, if I go to face mode and we've got a simple face. Again, like I was saying, this is quite bad topology but it doesn't actually matter too much when you're on a flat surface like this. If you're worried about the topology, then you can go into vertex mode and start linking these up by clicking one and then the other and then pressing J to join and you can link up your topology around your skull. But in this case, because it's a flat surface, it really doesn't matter. And when you export this to a game engine, it will triangulate the mesh anyway. Okay, so what about the eyes and the nose? Well, let's go back to top view with seven, back to wireframe mode, and use my knife tool with K and cut across like this. 
Now if I right click on this line, I can subdivide and that creates a single vertex just there. I can grab that and move it into the middle of my eye. I'm going to go back to solid mode just so you can see. I've also got to do a cut from the top here down to here. So I'll choose this one here, select those two with shift left click and J to join and these two here, J to join. Now if I select this middle vertex, I can press control B to bevel. Nothing's happening at the moment when I move my mouse, but if I press V, you can see that it's creating this bevel shape here. If I just left click once, I get this menu over here and I can increase the segments and that will add segments on the outside. And then I can change my profile so it goes outwards like this and create a circle for the eyes. So we can do the same for the nose. I can click on these two, right click to subdivide and it will create a point in the middle. Let's just move that up, grab in the Y, move that up to there, control B and then V to bevel the vertex. Ah, and I forgot something, I forgot to link it up there. If you haven't got four edges going into it, then it will only do two of those edges. So I'll undo that, select these two, J to join, select that middle one and control B and V for vertex. There we go, now I've got a nose. And interestingly, it's the right shape there. I might have to adapt this one slightly so I can just press G to grab to make them a bit more round. Let's go into face mode and select these faces, outer top view, E to extrude and pull them inwards. Okay, so we've got a fun looking gold coin. Now, like I was saying, if you take this into a game engine, now it will triangulate it. So if I press A to select all and control T, that's pretty much what the game engine is going to do to it. And that's fine for a fairly low poly coin, especially if you're gonna get close up to it. There's other things that you might want to do that will make it look a bit nicer. What I think makes it look a bit more artistic, if we select the edge loops, if I press two to go to edge mode, alt left click on these loops, and then press control B to bevel. I can bevel those like that. And if I left click, I can change the profile back to a curve. And in fact, I'll bring the segments down so it's only one segment. The offset, the amount you bevel is just there. So you might want a big sort of chunky bevel or not. Somewhere around there should be fine. And I'll select these ones in here as well. You can't as easily alt click because these aren't proper edge loops because they've got poles around the place. You can click on one and control click on the next one and it will find the shortest route for you. So if I click on this one and control click here and then here, it will find my loop around the edge there and control B to bevel. And there we've got a good looking coin. I'll hide the empty in the background and let's go to the shading editor to make our coin look amazing. So if I press full stop on my numpad to zoom in on my coin, I'll create a new material down here and I'll change it to a gold color. So a nice yellowy color and the metallic up. It doesn't look so great at the moment and there's a few things we can do. Let's go across to the render tab and make sure ambient occlusion is selected. And you can see instantly it adds the shading in the crevices. If we click on the down arrow, we can increase the distance as well. That looks a bit nicer. I think screen space reflections is certainly going to help us here. And you can see it adds that bit of reflection as well. And that looks kind of nice now. Also bringing the roughness down will give it a bit more shine. So somewhere around there. You'll notice though that the reflections are a little bit grainy. So if I come under screen space reflections here, I can turn off half trace or half res trace and it gives a better resolution. Also, if I right click and shade smooth, it goes a bit blobby, but we can use the auto smoothing option under the object data panel. Just there and under normals, if I click on auto smooth and anything with an angle of 30 degrees or less will be smoothed out. So I can change the parameters here as I see fit by clicking and dragging on this and then seeing where I want my smooth to work. So 30 degrees ended up being quite good. And you can see around here, it's nice and smooth and on the edges, it's sharp. So it's looking pretty good at the moment. The last thing I like to do, and this might be slightly beyond the scope of a beginner. So don't worry too much if this doesn't make sense, you don't have to follow along with this bit. Is Shift A to add, input ambient occlusion and bring that in. And I'll just copy the color from here by left clicking and dragging into the color. Then if I plug that in, you can see it offers a little bit more ambient occlusion. You can go one step further than this actually. If I press Shift A to add, color, mix RGB, and bring that into the bottom tab, and I use this as a multiply, and copy the color from here to there, and then change this to a ready sort of color. Then the ambient occlusion is affecting this color just in the crevices. So we get a reddish color in the crevices. Tends to look a tiny bit more gold-like, I would say. If you're finding this confusing, then just stick to the base color. 
If you're using cycles, you could use the pointiness node. If you want to know more about that, then do check out my tutorials on Node School. Now I've noticed there's one thing I've forgotten, which is little notches and things. So if I go back to layout mode and into my shape with tab, in order to do this, I will want to apply the mirror because if you have a notch on one side and it's repeated on the other, it looks a bit silly. So you can apply your mirror, but you can't do that in edit mode. So tab out of edit mode, apply the mirror, back into edit mode, and I can easily select an edge and press control B and bring it out like this. And I increase the segments. You can use your wheel mouse as well to increase the segments. And then I can grab this and drag it inwards. Alternatively, if I go to vertex mode with one and over to my tools over here, active tools and workspace settings under options, put auto merge on. Then if I grab one of these and press GG to edge slide, I can slide them into each other. And then I've got a notch in there. So I'll create another few notches around the place. And lastly, let's make a tiny pile of them. So we're going to side view and duplicate them. I'll rotate them each by the Z to give them some variation. Go to side view as well. Maybe grab one and move it out. And there we've got a nice pile of coins. And the last step is doing some lighting. I've got another video on that, which is how to make your renders look really nice. Make sure you check that out if you need any help in that area. So there we have it, making a fun gold coin for our games. If you've got any questions, then do comment below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.